All right, this is lesson 5.2. Lesson 5.2, and we're going to call this lesson trig ratios. Trig ratios. It sounds way more intimidating than what it is. 5.2 trig, which stands for trigonometric ratios. <clears throat> What is trigonometry? It is not, guys, it is not hard. Just because it's a long word, a big word, doesn't mean that it's hard. Okay, trigonometry is used, used to find missing angles. and sides in right triangles. So it's going to help us use um, some trigonometry, which just means some ratios. You guys see on your calculators you have that sin cost tan. You guys see that? Okay, so sin cos tan really means sine, so do not say sin, you're going to say sine, and then cos, we're going to say cosine, and then tan, we're going to say tangent, okay? So here's a couple things to think about, and something that I need you to hear very clearly. We're going to choose sine, cosine, or tangent, which one to use based on the information we are given in the triangle. Okay, so one time we might use sine, the next time we might use tangent. It just depends on the information that's been given to you. And sometimes for students that's hard. Well, how do I know which one to pick? Well, you don't have to pick one. There's only going to be one option because it's going to be based on the information that you're given. Okay? When we're talking about our sides, we have an opposite side, an adjacent side, and a hypotenuse. That's it. So let's write that up here in the um, definition spot. You're going to have what's called an adjacent side. We're going to abbreviate ADJ. You're going to have an opposite side. And then you'll have the hypotenuse. Only one of those will never change. Which one do you think will never change? <laughs> The hypotenuse. <laughs> Why? Because it always stays across from the Excellent, Monica. It always stays across from the right angle. So if we're looking at this example here, this little drawing, which side is going to be the hypotenuse? C. C, right? C will always be the hypotenuse no matter what because it is across from the right angle. Now, B and A will change based on which angle we're talking about. So if I am talking about a sine, all right, the sine is the ratio of the leg opposite the angle to the hypotenuse. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a lot of jargon, right? So let's talk about this. Sine uses opposite and hypotenuse, okay? Sine uses opposite and hypotenuse. And I like to write it like this, S... O over H. So I know the S stands for sine, and it's always going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Always. Always, always. That ratio will never change. So if it's asking us for the sine of A... That means we're looking at angle A, okay? So we're going to look at angle A. Use a pencil if you're going to mark your angle because we're going to erase and do it again. Okay, so it's going to, it says the sine of A. Do you guys see that over here? Mm -hmm. A is representing an angle, okay? That's angle A. 
says opposite over hypotenuse. So which side is the hypotenuse, first of all? C. C. So C is going to be on the bottom. What's going to be on the top? Which side is opposite of angle A? A, right? You guys see that? Opposite angle A is A. So I'm going to have A over C representing the sine of angle A. If you are confused, it will make sense in a few minutes. We're just going to keep talking, okay? And you're, you'll get it, I promise. You'll get it. All right? What about the sine of B? So now we're going to erase the markings that we made. And we're looking at angle B. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So which side is opposite angle B? B. Side B. Do you guys agree with that? Okay, so that's going to be B over, which one's your hypotenuse? So it's going to be B over C. You will never go from the right angle, okay? You're never going to have to talk about angle C because opposite and hypotenuse is the same thing, right? And that would be a little bit confusing. It wouldn't be C over C. So you're not going to have to go from the 90 degree angle. Okay, the next one is cosine. And cosine, so we're going to say cosine is represented by the adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent. What does adjacent mean? Beside. Adjacent is the hardest one to find, okay? So if I'm looking for the cosine of A, so let's start again on angle A. I'm looking for the adjacent side and the hypotenuse side. So which one is the hypotenuse for sure? C, right? We can all agree with that. And then which one is the adjacent side beside it? Is it A or B? B is beside, right? A is across, so it's not going to be A because that's opposite. So it's going to be B over C. Again, if you are confused, I want you just to keep writing. We're going we're gonna to make it. When we start to do some examples, I promise it's going to help. Cosine of B. So let's look down at angle B. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So which side is adjacent to angle B? A, right? It's beside it. So it's A over what? C. Good. Okay, the last one is called tangent. And tangent is always opposite over adjacent. Miss Miriam, how am I ever going to remember this? I have a trick for you. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Tangent, we're looking for opposite over adjacent. So tangent of angle A. Okay, so here's our angle. Which side is opposite? A, right? A is opposite. Which side is adjacent? B, right? It can't be C because C is always a hypotenuse, right? So it's going to be B. Then if we talk about the tangent of angle B, tangent of angle B, I'm using opposite over adjacent. Which one is opposite? B over adjacent, which is? A. Good. B over A. Here's the way to remember it. Here's the way to remember it. There's this little girl, and her name was So Ka Toa. A little Indian girl named Soka Toa. And Soka Toa loved math and she loved trigonometry. So much so that we named trigonometry after her, Soka Toa. I'm just kidding about that, but. It helps you remember, right? Because look, so ka toa, all right? It tells you already sine. Mm hmm, you see it? Sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is always opposite over adjacent. So they already line up the ratios and proportions for you. I will write so ka toa on the board for you when you take your test, right?
So it's not really hard to remember that part. It's always going to be Sokotoa. Okay, let's do some examples down at the bottom. Okay, number, oh, it says remember. Okay, so this is where we're going to put kind of our vocabulary in. So when we write uh, Sokotoa, so sign is always so, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Ka is always adjacent over hypotenuse. And Toa is opposite over adjacent. Okay? So number one, what is the sine of angle A? So if we're looking at angle A, let's make our little arc on angle A. Remember, sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. And you can give yourself, like, a little reminder if you need to. Which one's opposite? Kara, which one's opposite angle A? Um, five. five. Okay. Maybe we'll do it up here. Five over, what's the hypotenuse, Charmony? Thirteen. So the ratio of sine of angle A is five over thirteen. Okay. What about um, the cosine of angle A? Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Julia, which side is the adjacent? For angle A. Always looking for sides. Twelve. Twelve. Right, because we know that thirteen is always the hypotenuse. This is going to be our opposite and this is our adjacent. Okay, so 12 over my hypotenuse, which is 13. Guys, labeling like I did, do you see on my triangle how I labeled AOH? That's going to be super helpful for you. Now, I'd use a pencil because we're, once we switch over to cosine, we're going to, or when we switch to another angle, we're going to redo that. Okay, but we know that 13 is always our hypotenuse. Always, always, always. And for angle A, 5 is opposite and 12 is adjacent. So tangent of A, Braxton, what's tangent of A going to be? 5 over 12. 5 over 12. Do you guys notice that all three of these, none of them are the same? None of your ratios are the same. They should not duplicate each other. They're not the same. Okay, what about sine of C? So now we're going to talk about angle C. So now I'm going to erase this over here in my diagram. I'm talking about angle C now. Which one is the hypotenuse, Monique? 13. 13, always. That one doesn't change. Which one is my opposite, Tylea? If we're talking about angle C, which one is the opposite? 12. And then 5 has to be adjacent. So now I'm just matching things up, right? I've labeled my triangle. Now I'm just matching things up. So the sine of C, Donald, what's going to be the sine of C? Opposite over hypotenuse. So what are you going to say? Yeah. 12 over 13. Good. The cosine of C, Natasha. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What are you going to say? 5 over what? Good. Because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Carla, what are you going to say about the tangent? Opposite over adjacent. Uh, 12 over 5. Perfect. 12 over 5. Okay. Any questions about that? Number 3. What's the tricky thing about number 3? We're missing a side. Is there a way that we can find that side? Yes. What? Okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and which side is going to be c? Mm, we're on number two. Which side is going to be c? The one we don't know, right? Okay, 
So I'd like you to do A squared, B squared, C squared, and find that missing side first before we can begin. You okay? Amanda, what'd you get for that missing side? What'd you say? 15. Okay, so we're going to start with the sine of W. And so if we do the sine of W, okay, I want you to start there. And I want you to label your opposite, hypotenuse and adjacent. And we're going to see if we get the same answers. Go ahead and do sine of W, all the W's, and do all the X's, and then we'll see if we come up with the same answers. Talk to your classmates, see if they're getting the same thing. If you're watching the video, go ahead and press pause. Okay, sign of W, Tylea. What is the sign of W? Number two, what is the sign of W? 12 over what? 12 over 15. Some of you reduce these, do not reduce, just leave it as is. What is the cosine of W, Hortensia? Um, nine. nine over 15. James, what is the tangent of tan, uh, W? 12 over nine. 12 over nine. Everybody agree with that? Raise your hand if this is what you agree with. Yes. Okay, I didn't see your hand. All right, sine of X. Sine of X. Carla, what's the sine of X? 9 over 15. Cosine of x, Lexi? 12 over 15. And tangent of x, Ashley? 9 over 12. Guys, I want to show you something interesting. What do you notice? Yep. Do you see this? These are the same. These are the same. These are opposites. Okay, see that? Okay, that wasn't coincidence. But that should happen every time when you're talking about different angles, though. The cosine and the what? Oh, wait, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. That's all right. It's not a big deal. Okay, let's look at some actual examples. We're not going to do number three. Let's look at some 